A very warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, yeah, God bless. Uh, this, my name is Hope, and this YouTube is called The Burning Bush. On this channel, we will talk about the preparation of the Bride of Christ, how to be prepared as a bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. How to be, there's a certain way the Lord wants us to be prepared, suitable to Him, acceptable to Him. And that's what we talk about on this channel. And maybe if you're not born again, maybe you're, you've not known the Lord, you don't, you don't even know what a born again is, I would uh, encourage you to check on some of my YouTube, on the, with some of the videos on this channel about salvation. I think I did some videos on, this, on salvation. I just throw, scroll down. I pray that the Holy Spirit will lead you to the right video, you know, suitable to, to your need in Jesus' name. And I pray too that the Holy Spirit of God will encounter you, the God of salvation, the God who died, the Lord Jesus Christ, who became man and offered, became a living sacrifice that he can redeem you, that he gave himself on the cross to redeem you, to redeem mankind. So that as you cry out to him, you, you know the, how frail you are as a human being. Without Christ, you have crisis. You, even you, your life is crisis because uh, uh, the, uh, the mind can fail when Adam sinned in the, in the Garden of Eden. So no matter whatever you try to do on your own power, by mind power, it's not uh, acceptable to God unless you come to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, and I pray that you, as you cry out to Christ, the, the author and the finish of our faith, the one who died, became sin for humanity to save you and me. If you come to him and confess your sins, he is able, he is loving, forgiving to accept you because the wages of sin is death. And say the, the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, his love is, is uh, everlasting. He will give you everlasting life. Come to him, come to him in sincerity, come to him in honesty, confess your sins, not just because maybe you're going through a, a phase in your life, but to just come with sincerity because you need, you're a sinner who needs a savior, who needs, who wants Jesus to be Lord over your, your life, over your soul, over your, over your, your, your body. And then and ask him to be your Lord and savior. He will break whatever bondage, whatever thing you're going through. He will, he will take care of it in Jesus name. Amen. And uh, yeah, before, maybe you're new, before I start the, uh, this topic, I would like to sing because I love singing. Uh, before even I start singing, I pray that they, I pray, I hand over this uh, program to the Holy Spirit of God, who has uh, led me to do the, this topic. And I pray, and I pray that the, uh, I pray the Holy Spirit take over, take over everything, take over the video, take over everything within me, physically and spiritually. I hand over everything to you. I yield my tongue. I yield all in me to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. I enter to the Holy of Holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to holies of holies. I enter, oh, through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you, Lord, only. I enter to honor I am. I enter to see your face only, Lord. I enter to worship I am. I enter to holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to the holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to the holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God seated upon the throne. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God, seated on the throne. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God, who seated on the throne. Hallelujah to the King of Kings, seated on the throne. You are the Lamb upon 
the throne of grace jesus you are the lamb upon the throne unto the lord jesus be your glory great things the lord jesus is done unto the lord be your glory great things he has done oh great things oh great things greater things the lord you will do unto the lord oh be your glory great things he has done you are the lamb upon the throne of grace lord you are the lamb upon the throne over my family jesus you are the lamb upon the throne of grace you are the lamb upon the throne over christian marriages jesus is the lamb upon the throne of grace jesus is the lamb upon the throne over every home jesus is the lamb upon the throne of grace jesus you are the lamb upon the throne you are the lamb upon the throne of grace you are the lamb upon the throne unto the lord jesus be all the glory great things he has done unto the lord be all glory mighty things he has done amen 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 blessed be the name of the lord the father god the son god the holy spirit in jesus name amen so i have a you know there is a topic the lord has um, given me at the moment and uh, it's a very powerful topic god is um yeah before even i mention the topic i want to um i want to read this uh, passage of the bible that is uh, the gospel of luke chapter 3 verse uh, verses 4 to 6 he said as it is written in the book of the words of isaiah the prophet a voice of one calling in the wilderness prepare the way for the lord make straight path make straight paths for him and every valley shall be filled in every mountain and hill made low the crooked roads shall may, shall become straight the rough ways smooth and all people will see god's uh, salvation blessed be the name of the lord amen amen you know the foundation of everything is very important the foundation of everything we do in life is very important like here yeah, this scripture of the bible i just read you know it's, i think it's in isaiah i think in 44 or i'm not too sure but in, it's in isaiah before a crooked way can be made straight because this road crooked road that was that became crooked was once straight but now the lord is saying that a voice of one crying in the wilderness say make make way make make a straight path for him and every valley shall be made shall be filled in and every mountain and hill made low so these mountains they are mountains of problems these mountains were, they are not there before this hill was not there before he said the crooked roads shall become straight and the rough places smooth and all people shall see god's salvation this this things now is a kind of it's restoration which when at the beginning it was not so at the beginning it was not so so that leads me to the the uh, the importance of a, a foundation of a foundation of anything in life the foundation of how you started your life the foundation of um of how maybe somebody a child starting a primary school is very important if that foundation of a child starting primary school is not the child is not taking care of properly uh, taught how to read and write or how to pronounce words if he misses it that that early stage will miss it in life he will not know how to speak properly he will not know how to read properly he will not know how to pronounce properly because the foundation was not properly laid that's the wide importance of a foundation. And again, the foundation of a country, the foundation of a family is very important. Especially, that's why the Lord in the Bible, God takes time to make sure whatever he does is laid, is, being, is done on his foundation, on the foundation of God. 
And then if that was not initially from beginning on his foundation, what he does, he calls it out. Out of that crooked, he calls it out of them. Maybe the fine foundation I did at, uh, with Abraham. He called Abraham out of his father's house, his country, his, red, his kindred, to start a new foundation with him. Because he wants to build a new, a fresh foundation that, that, will be, that, will be, that, be, uh, be, that he built on his own foundation. Because that which Abraham came from was faulty. So even the Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ said in, in um, Matthew, uh, Matthew uh, Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, I think 24. Gospel of Matthew chapter 7. The Gospel of Matthew, I think uh, chapter 7. Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse, um, uh, oh yeah, verse 24. I just want to, if any, then any foundation that's laid by, the, by God himself is, a, is, a, is, is built on a, sol on a solid house. Like here, Matthew 24. He said, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And when the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew, and beat upon the, that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. But contrary to that a foundation that founded a rock, built on the Lord, contrary to it, everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and that house, and it fell, and great was the fall. So the foundation, the Lord Jesus Christ even spoke about it. The foundation of everything we do in life is very important. Even the foundation of how you started your ministry, if you're in a ministry, is very important. The foundation of your marriage is very important. The foundation of how you, you, you conceived your children is very important. The foundation of how, how, maybe how you came into a family, if you're married to a family, a man or woman, is very important. On what ground did you come into it? I'm sorry. In the name of Jesus, I'm blessed. So the foundation, like now, even uh, uh, physically on a, a house, when a house is, bu uh, is built, people take time to make sure the foundation of that house is solid. The foundation of any house, the foundation, because at the end of the day, the foundation of that house is going to be the carrier of the four walls of that house. If there is a, this, um, the foundation of a house is built on a sand, it's not built on a solid, on the, is it the foundation of it is not on a concrete, it's not going to hold the walls. Even though uh, maybe you're going to build a bungalow, it's not going to hold. It's going to crumble. So that is how important the foundation of everything we do in life is. So, and then now, if they, especially now, because I'm talking, I'm going to go about marriage today. The Lord is, is, uh, has been, you know, teaching me the Holy Spirit about marriage, what to talk to, to uh, this, what to speak to families and homes, because God wants to bring restoration. So, uh, that is how the important, important of a marriage, important of a foundation. A foundation that's meant for a bungalow, you cannot add a two-story building. No, it's not going to carry it. Because the foundation, the carrier of that foundation of that house, it's not solid. It's not suitable for that uh, two-story building. And if it's a foundation that's a, that is done, foundation meant for two-story building, it cannot make a, maybe a story buildings on it. No, it's going to collapse because the foundation is not meant for it. So, that's how important every foundation is. And then I want to go again in, uh, in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, I think chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I, I didn't put this one now, I'm about to say. It's just uh, the Holy Spirit now brought it to my memory. Let me just go into it. Uh, 2 Corinthians um, chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter Ne chapter chapter Second Corinthians chapter yeah chapter three. Uh, uh, first Corinthians chapter three, I'm very sorry. So he said, uh, let me just I'm not going to read all. He said, For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed on how he buildeth thereon. Thereupon. 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that, than that that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, and wood, hey, stubble, uh, stubble 
Every man's work shall be made manifest by the day. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work. What sort it is. So, 14. If any man's work abide, which he has built there, thereupon, he shall receive a, a reward. So, it now, even Apostle Paul is even reminding us that the, the, the foundation of the gospel, even the Bible from Genesis until Revelation, is if, if God opens your, your eyes, it's about G Christ and his kingdom. Jesus Christ and his kingdom from Genesis to Revelation. So, there's a foundation God has laid concerning marriages. Because God, God is, a, is, a, is a founder. He instituted the institution of marriage. It was God himself that started marriage. God himself instituted families, a family. Because God has a great interest on families. Even the, even the, the society, the secular society, the, the career or the, 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 the foundation of every society, even the secular one, is family. It starts from marriage and family. Which every family starts from a marriage. So if the foundation of any marriage is not, uh, is not proper, the, the foundation of the children of that family, or a foundation of any, if the foundation of a marriage is, is not, uh, is not uh, uh, the foundation, is faulty, so the, 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 the foundation of the family will continue to be faulty. The children are going to suffer as a result because the foundation of that marriage that should carry the children who, that will come later, that will, that will be added into that family, will be faulty, will be shaky because the foundation carrying them is not stable. It's, so like, it's like a foundation of a house. When the foundation that, that is to carry the walls of the house, whether a bungalow, whether a story building, whether how many story, if, if the foundation is not stable, whatever I put on it is not going to carry, it's going to sink, it will collapse. So God is calling us. It's, that is why the importance of foundation. How? I'm asking, uh, it's importance of foundation. And that is why the scripture, Luke chapter 3, verse 4 to 6, he said now, God he say, make a, a voice of, of, of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight path for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, the rough way smooth, and all people shall see God's salvation. So these are the foundation that we are faulty. God is calling, calling, you know, for a uh, um, restoration of this, this, this foundation that we are faulty. He calling to be rest, calling it to be restored. And that is what I'm, I'm about to talk about here. How to bring this faulty foundation that, that became faulty, which was not God's uh, initial, uh, initial, um, uh, um, initial purpose that became faulty. It was on a godly foundation before it became faulty. That's what God here is calling for, restoration of that foundation. So now I want to uh, uh, go on uh, Psalm, uh, Psalm 3, uh, Psalm 11 verse, um, Psalm 11 verse uh, 3. Psalm 11 verse 3. So Psalm 11 verse 3. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundation of anything be destroyed, is it foundation of your home? But now, I'm just talking about this today. It's about foundation of a marriage, of a home, of your marriage. Then, which is the marriage, which is, the, is then the carrier of your family, the carrier of the offspring. If the foundation be faulty, be destroyed, what can the righteous do? On that, when that foundation that is uh, destroyed continues to be on that faulty foundation, there's nothing a righteous man can do unless there's repentance. Unless we acknowledge and make a U-turn, which God is calling us to do. In Jesus' name. Um, so, like I said, the foundation of every society is marriage. Marriage and then the, 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 is, the, is the marriage. It's about marriage which consists of a man and a woman, according to God's order. And then, then family, which the offspring, which comes later. But the carrier of that foundation is marriage. So it's also the foundation, the, 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 main, uh, is it the main carrier of any society or the main, um, uh, the, the word, and I, I, I don't know, the word is just missing. It's, it's a family. The foundation of any society, the secular of any society, is the family. It starts from marriage and family. Where there are no families, there, there is no marriage, people are not getting married, people are not uh, 
uh, having children, that society going to, is going to die out. That country is going to die out. That is why every country, whether secular or not, they encourage uh, families, they encourage people having children. Why? They want to sustain their, their heritage. They want to sustain that country. And that can be sustained through the foundation of family and marriage, to marriage then to family that becomes a family through the offsprings that comes later into the marriage. So the career of that, uh, that foundation, which is marriage, the, there's an important goal that laid on it, you know, how to sustain this, uh, how to start it. But if we have started not faulty foundation, there's a way out, which God is calling us now. He wants to bring restoration to families, to homes, family, to marriages, and family, and families. And uh, yeah, I want, I want us to go to, to uh, you know, before, you know, there's a, an attack on family um, in the secular world. There's an attack on family, the, the family in the order of God. There's an attack, a terrible attack on family, on marriages and on families. Terribly. And for us, we believers, now the called out ones, the ones who are called out, who are saved, washed by the blood of Jesus, for us to fight successfully against this uh, onslaught, against families and homes, we must be on the right side of God. We must be, have a righteous uh, uh, lifestyle. We must be, we, our ways with God has to be perfect, has to be perfect in order to fight the onslaught of uh, darkness that is uh, arranged against, against, the, against families. But because you cannot fight something if you are a partaker of something. Of this kind of evil, if you are your partaker, even though you're not practicing it the way they are practicing in that form, even though you 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 dislike it, you're not practicing it in that form. But in within that uh, that uh, this uh, this kind of uh, is it this kind of enterprise or how would I put it? You have some some uh, some um, some practices that come from this Bible. It's, it's Babylonian practices, but some part of it you have it in your family. You cannot fight this this aggressor. You cannot fight this attack so safely, no. So safely, no. You cannot fight Satan. We are a partaker of his kingdom. No. So that is why this topic is all about. And uh, I want to start because there is even, even I did a, a video on the German channel because there's a trend that are going on. We are uh, the children of God, children of God, born again believers in churches, turning the ordinances of God for marriage to that of uh, Babylon, that of King of Heaven, that of uh, uh, the spirit of Israel, uh, uh, the spirit of Jezebel. In, uh, where, uh, whereby the, the female, the man being the head of the family, God had made to be the authority, the father of a home in the similitude of God. The man now taking the, 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 the family name, the surname of his wife, instead of the wife carrying the surname of, of her husband which is biblically, which is the godly way, because they want to um, uh, portray, display the, the role of God as a father. But now there's a, there's a twist on that, uh, there's a twist, a perverted, uh, a perverted version of this, um, of this uh, godly order. And God is calling us to repentance. It's a very wicked practice. God is calling us to repentance. We cannot do such thing and ask God to come and dwell in us. No. Or within us, no. God is calling us to repentance. If you maybe you have done that, you are part of that. People who have done that. Please and run as as fast as you can and change that 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 perverted way. You a man, your husband is in according to the will of God, according to the ordination of God for marriages, according to the purpose of God. When as from the beginning, a man, a woman should carry the surname of her husband. And not the husband taking the surname of, of his wife. That's the perversion of the order of God. And there, if you, if you, anyone doing that, that's a, a faulty foundation. The, 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 the foundation of that marriage is already faulty. God cannot bless such a, such a, such a, a foundation. God can never bless such. No. There will be problems because that foundation is not built. The foundation of that, that marriage is built on a very faulty foundation. Very, it's built on a sand, which is very shaky which is shaking, it can never stand. And then, later then having children and the, the offspring to, to that family, then we all kinds of problems will break up because Satan will invade that family because the foundation of it is not according to the ways of God. It's not godly. 
Whether, you know, marriage is a universal thing. It's not only, but this one, if you're a believer, go in the order of God. We are to display the, the, the kingdom of God on earth because the kingdom of God is in us. He said, when you're born again, the kingdom, kingdom of God comes in, inside of you. And then as you begin to walk in a righteous living, that kingdom of God that's inside begins to come, ooze out, begin to display. People will say, but when you begin, you're born again, you begin to walk in the ways of the hidden, the ways, the perverted way of uh, Babylon, and their, and their rules, and their, which is feminist, uh, a feminist, um, feminist uh, uh, thwarted, uh, 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 that uh, thwarts the ways of God, the ordination of God. God can never be part of that marriage. God can never be part of it. It will not bless that marriage. Instead of, instead of blessings, curses will be, be part of that family. The children will be under terrible manipulation. The family, the husband and wife, be under terrible manipulation. That is why God, if you're a born again child of God, go and change that. That perverted, that evil, evil perversion. Go and change it. God is calling you, run and change it. So I said, bless it and, and, and cry to God for repentance and pray and break those curses over you, over your family. You see God, because God wants to restore families. God wants to bring families, restore his family, restore his people. You see God in action over your family in Jesus' name. So I want to then go back uh, to where uh, my topic for today. Um, I want to go to, uh, let's go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. You know, there was a time the Lord made me, I went through this Genesis. Over one year, me, my group, we went to, we were Genesis, just Genesis, a whole year. The Holy Spirit taught us so many things. I never knew, you know. The Lord told me not to do anything, but just uh, stay on Genesis. Well, a whole year, he taught us a lot of deep, secret, a lot of deep mysteries came out of it. And I'm, very, I'm thankful to God that I heeded to that uh, instruction in Jesus' name. And then now, uh, I would like, I want to start Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. To 27. Okay, concerning marriage, you know, uh, before I started, officially started the ministry, that was uh, 2019. You know, I, I've been married for 23 years now. I think I, I shared this before. I married very young. And I thank God for that, that I married quite young. And uh, when I, uh, I started uh, this ministry, 2019, officially, I started 2016, actually, but officially it's 2019. The Lord, be, I've been married then for, I think, for 19 years. Yeah, 19. 19 years, yeah? No, I think, no, 20, 19 years, yeah, 19. When I started the ministry, the Lord told me that I should go. I got married, only civic marriage. I did civic uh, marriage. I did the traditional, I did the, the civic one, which I did. But uh, the, the civic one, which is the court one. I think it's called court. But the one, the, uh, even though I was born again, uh, then I was not born again when I got married. And when I got married, but later I became born again. But when I started in 2019, the Lord told me to go and get a, have a pastor to pray over my marriage so that my children can be blessed. Wow. When the Holy Spirit began to teach me, begin to explain to me why and why not, I was like, oh, because I've always wanted to marry in the church. And then I said, ah, all these years I've been married anyway, but the Holy Spirit told me, look, for me, to my whole protection to be over you and your family, you have to marry. You have to have a pastor to pray over your marriage and bless your children. Uh, so when I did that, I, I know I did, uh, I, I bought, some, I bought uh, some things. I did, uh, I did a white, uh, I had to, you know, call a pastor, a pastor, I know, bless my home, bless my marriage, bless my children, you know, did the Lord. Then that chapter was closed. When that chapter, that chapter was closed. You know, which I thank God for because the Lord told me because for me to do what I call me to do, my family, my marriage has to be under his ordination. Even though I was married in a civic uh, way, uh, traditionally I got married, but the Lord told me my marriage has to come under his ordination, under his blessings. My marriage, my children has to be under his own foundation for his full protection to be over me and my family and my marriage. That is, I wanted to share this uh, testimony. But now, and now, and I thank God. You see, it might be, it will be a blessing to someone. Listen to it in Jesus' name. So, and uh, here I want to go to Genesis chapter two, uh, chapter one, verse twenty-six. How the formation of a uh, man. It says Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-six. And God said, let, uh, let us make man in our image, and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Over the fish of the over the fish of over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, 
and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created man, him, male and female created he them. So God said, let us make man. In the, God made man. God said, let us, he made man in his own image. Man, which a woman was inside the man. God made man in his image. There's a purpose why I'm, you know, being, I've been uh, emphasizing man. The, uh, the woman was inside the man when God made man. God called him, called them man. Because God is still here displaying the fatherhood, the, the role of the God being the father, God being the son, God being the Holy Spirit, being the male kind of male version, not a woman. This is why I'm, there's a purpose why I'm emphasizing this uh, this uh, topic, this uh, scripture. So um, I want us to uh, to go. So. And again, as God made them, made them uh, here. And then a uh, chapter. I want to, let's go to Genesis uh, chapter two, verse uh, verses um, verses seven. Genesis chapter two, verse seven. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed in, into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. God breathed. That the Lord God there breathed a, 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 a man. He made. He, he formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed his, into his nostril the breath of life. The breath of life being the breath of God. God himself breathed his own breath, gave his life, breathed, breathed his life into the nostril of a man. He gave his life, part his life into the nostril of a man. For purpose, man is a carrier of God. Man is a carrier of God in him. So now man become, became a living soul. So when God, after doing that, God placed the man in the, in the garden, told him to have a, to, uh, to watch over it, and he should care and take it. He gave the man, the same man, he said, made man. It remained on man, not on woman and woman, no. It remained on man. He, uh, the woman being in the man, God is still displaying God as a, as a father, God as a son, God as a, as a Holy Spirit, being an, a fatherly figure. Not a motherly figure. If God, so there's an attribute of God, also a, a man, woman in God. But here, God is displaying Him being man, being a, the um, a father, being a father. Okay. Who that is a, um, being a father that is a male, a male figure, being a father in a male figure. That's what God is trying to display here. So, and then after He told them to have dominion. Oh, oh, they said, God placed this man in the garden of Eden. He gave him, and then he gave him one. There's a commandment God gave him. Being in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. He said, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So they said, this tree, don't eat it. When God, why God, why was God so hard? And after God warned uh, Adam not to eat from that tree. When God was warning Adam, Eve was still in Adam. The, before Adam was created, this authority was handed over to Adam. Adam being the, 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 the head of a fa being the head. He gave it the authority. Before Adam did not ask for it. It was God's plan to give Adam the authority over, over the garden of Eden. And Eve being a help meet to, to the, the woman being a help meet to Adam. But the authority, God, Adam did not ask for it. God gave it to Adam and told the woman, the woman to be a helpmate. After they sinned, he told the woman to submit. You need to, your husband then will rule over you. But he told the woman to submit, to submit to her husband. You know, you know, sometimes I would, I would, as we were doing these studies, I would ask them, Lord, why was God so hard when they, uh, uh, on Adam and Eve, when they ate that uh, forbidden food? He warned them of, of the, of, because of the, because there will be perversion. Perversion of the order and government and rulership order of God. That was why. There will be, there will be a perversion of the order. He told them, he said, don't eat this food, food, this fruit of good and evil. Any day you eat it, you're going to die. So, because God, because he knew when they ate it, there was a perversion of the order of God, the government of God, the rulership order of God. Of the kingdom of God, they were, it was perverted. That was why the, the serpent sought Eve. He went to Eve. 
He went to if, even a normal society. If any man would want to, normally, even here in Europe, at the, at the, maybe in the 30s or so, before anybody, any man can approach any woman, he'll go to the husband as a respect to the husband. That's a godly order. As a respect, even in my culture where I come from in Africa, you don't approach a, a married woman like that. No, you go to the, the husband, her husband. Because as a respect to that, towards that, uh, that uh, holy matrimony, towards for the husband as the head. You don't just go to the, to the wife, you go to the husband. You talk to the husband, you know, before to the wife. It's not because the wife is uh, it's not what, it's not a what, nothing. No, it's as a respect. A respect to that holy matrimony, a respect to the order of that godly order. Even here in Europe, in, in, in time past, before this perversion came in, crept in. Uh, I want to, you know, he said, why, why, um, why was God on hard and when they sinned, God was, uh, gave them a very hard uh, punishment. Why? Because perversion of God's order was perverted. Now, instead of being the earth, God created, God the creator of heaven and earth, God the father of all creation. Jesus, the father, he said the, in Colossians, he said, Jesus the father, he said the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus the, the creator, the father of all creation, the father, not mother. But when Eve, when the earth, Eve, the serpent went to Eve to pervert the authority of God, by deceiving Eve from receiving, not listening to God, the Lord God, but to take, told them that the, the God told them not to eat. By that, perverting that godly order God had placed, put in order. And then that was why God cursed them. Cursed them. He told Eve, he went to, I just want to, I don't want to go too deep, deep. I want to uh, go to Genesis chapter, chapter 3, verse 17. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all, all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the harm of the field. <coughs> Sorry. The, in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For thus thou shalt thou art, and unto, the, unto thus shalt thou return. So, God cursed the earth. Why? Because the, the authority God had over the earth now is perverted. Has been perverted. Instead of God being the father of all creation, instead of God being the father of everything, God the father. Like now, I want to go to... So now, instead of God being the God, uh, God, the father of all creation, now the serpent, the authority God gave to Adam, now they have handed over to Satan through the serpent. Now, that is why we have the names uh, like um, uh, mother, uh, mother goddess, the earth, the goddess of the earth, is that, uh, the earth called the mother, uh, mother, mother earth, queen of heaven, queen of the coast. Now, a perverted version of the order of God. Perverted version of the order of God. Instead of God being the father, being the manly role, God has started in heaven and on earth. Now, perversion. That role, that godly government, that God, the order of government of God, leadership of God, of the kingdom of God, like in heaven, that should be on earth, has been perverted. Now, we have instead of king, God being the king, God being the father, now we have queen, uh, the earth, the mother, uh, the uh, earth, the uh, earth being the, uh, the goddess of the earth, the mother earth, the mother earth, queen of heaven, queen of the coast, instead of the mainly one. So that's where this spirit of Jezebel comes in. The, the movement of fem feminism, the feminist movement, this is where they write from. You know, like I read before, God wants to restore the churches. I want to then, before I move on again, I would like to go to um, uh, what, why Satan reacted the way he reacted to the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 4, from 1 to, I think I'm, I will stop there. Matthew chapter 1, then I'm, I'm going to make step by step to, you know, to, to, um, to explain these things and why God is calling us back to the old time religion, back because he want to restore families. He want to go to the root of that problem. You know, my calling is about going to seeking the root of that problem because when God wants to restore, God wants to deal with the root, 
the root of that problem. Even in a, in a, in a human society, in a human society, if a, a tree is having a problem, maybe there are pests on the tree. They try to treat the the, the, the root of the tree. Even the tree to have a go to the dental dentist. The dentist maybe have caries or so. What it does, it's not going to treat the the caries. It's going to check the root, the root and see what how much uh, caries is in the car. Uh, is it caries? Uh, it's in, in the teeth. I don't know. I think it's caries in English. To in, in the teeth to be able to treat to treat the, the root of, the, of your tooth in order to hunt, to in order to treat the caries. If you treat the caries and leave the, the root, the root problem of that tooth, that tooth that that tooth is going to decay. So that what God is doing now. God wants to bring resurrection in marriages, in families, in homes that were laid on a faulty foundation through wrong marriages through maybe maybe if you, maybe you, you, want, you came into this marriage through you were not born again but those who are really born again who purposely who are on the wrong foundation who, who still went on and built their marriage on the wrong foundation that satan is fighting with tooth and nail god wants to restore and that is what i'm doing here i want to go to i want, I want us to go to uh, matthew chapter 4 matthew chapter 4 Matthew chapter 4, uh, uh, the temptation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 4 from 1 to 9. I need to be, that it doesn't get too long. So, um, then Jesus was led up to the, led up of the spirit into the wilderness to, to, the, to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of God, command thou these stones, be made bread. He said, now Satan came to the Lord Jesus. Just is this what he's telling him? He's just mocking him, mocking the Lord, because mocking the sonship, the order of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He mocking the sonship which God had put put in place. He said, "If thou be the Son of God, do this, because the kingdom, the kingdom, the earth have been handed over to him by Satan, by 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 Adam." So now, he, what he did, he perverted it. 